And we're going to create a program. I would say maybe like a, it's like a little fishing app or something. We go fishing, we catch some fish, and then we're going to, um, a certain size, we'll toss some fish back to the pond if it's too small and whatnot. So I'll put here a, um, uh, what I put here, a div, and we'll call it um, ID of fishing game. Okay. And then inside here, I'll put a, a, a P tag. And the P tag, I'll put an ID. That's your message. This message here will, you know, display whether we, you know, if the fish is, is, is um, got away or something, I'll put a message there, like a little alert. And then uh, I'll put a button here. And this button will be something like catch uh, fish. Okay. And I'll give an ID so it's just easier to um, access this button, ATN. Um, uh, fish. And then below that, I'll put another, uh, I'll use the UL and I'll put here a bunch of allies to list all the fish we, we catch. So ID would be again, uh, fish, uh, mix. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe the bottom just like catch, catch. Fish button, but it makes more sense. Okay. So that is going to be something like that. When I catch a fish, my button doesn't show because um, I misspelled the right button. So when I, I still misspelled, oh, cool. On. Okay. That's the word. All right. So when I, Click the catch a fish, then I wanted to um, let me randomize a number between one and 10. And let's just say that if it's, let's just pick the middle number. If it's less than five, then we'd say it's too, too small. We can let throw it back into the pond. If it's between five and 10, then we're, we're, we're going to, you know, catch that. It's put into a net. Um, and then we'll also do another random number that maybe got away, right? And we'll put the message right above you. Okay. So this is my setup. And, um, so, for example, if I put like LI, like fish, what call it like 10 pounds, like that, right? And then I also put here another button uh, that looks like this. Or in a button or in a message um, that I can release back to the pond. Okay. That's how I want to build this app. But I want to do everything here uh, dynamically using code. Okay. But Again, when you design applications such as this, you usually design your output, right? You decide how you want it to look like, and then you can go back and then start, you know, building your code. So that is the idea here. So I'm going to turn this off and what do inside the code. So this is pretty much done for now. Uh, let me add a CSS here. Uh, so let's see, start link, and then will be this CSS. All right, so let's go and dive into our uh, script over here. Now, when you um, when you do a script, you can because we already defer we already defer the the um, the script. So usually you want to wait until the DOM has been loaded, and just to make sure it's make sure it's safe, you can always do something like document um, app you've been listener, and you're listening to what's called a DOM content loaded event. Okay, this is very similar to how jQuery uses. If you load that, so then this script runs only when it, the DOM tree has been built, right? So if that's the case, then you can use something like this, right? And I kind of show you how to do this last time. So this is a function that will actually run automatically. So uh, if I if I'm using this this listener then in my script, I don't have to defer. Okay, so you can defer. Um, I mean, it doesn't hurt to defer as well, just in case, but if you were to share your script with your code with somebody else, and if they don't defer your code, then you have my crack. So this is how you can actually safeguard your code make, to guarantee that you will always work, okay? But if you don't do this, you can just remove them out. That's fine too. But since I'm gonna do that, I wanna leave it here, and then we can always turn it on and off. So when this code run, um, notice I don't have to invoke it because it will be called automatically. Um, 
Okay, so in here, what we're going to do is going to create a reference to those um, data. So the first one is going to be the button. So put here catch fish button. Um, this will be okay. Let's do um, document get ID. We call it catch uh, fish BTN, right? So that is the button. I have another one for the fish list. Call it fish uh, list is document. Notice it's not really nice because again, I'm inside that this function here. So well, now I want to turn this off now so I can type it faster. Okay. So document that get ID and we call it uh, fish dash list. So again, this. Make sure this idea matches exactly what you have over here, otherwise it won't work. So um, just, just be, care, be careful there. We got the list and I get, I also need the message. So message here, ID, get ID, I would call it message. And you notice that I use const a lot of my code. Okay, the reason I use const here, I wanna make sure that these don't, over, don't get overwritten. By X down, you can easily overwrite these data. Uh, so that when I get the data or get the button and get the you know fish list, I'm not gonna be assigned them again. So if I try to accidentally do something like fish list equal to one, right? You can't do that. It will actually protect your code from over from accidental um, or written. So that's that's why you do that. So if you don't intend to change your content uh, using the equal sign, then change that to a cons. Okay. And if it's not, then usually use a let as opposed to a bar. So then I'm gonna create a, um, a fish object, a fish class. You can use a constructive function or the class. So again, for this example, we use the fish class, okay? So that means that when I catch a fish, I'm just gonna you know, measure the size of this. So we'll put something like um, a size is equal to, um, uh, should we, I did something, something similar. I use a constructor for, for this case. That's use constructor. I'll put your size. And then I'll put this size is equal to the size coming in from the, um, the object. I also want to have a function. And this function here, I'll call it get fish info like this. And it will return a string that says, um, you know, fish. And I'll use the, um, use this. Templated syntax. Okay, it's the back takes. That is called a templated syntax. It allows you to um, interpolate text inside the, your code. It also allows you to do like multi-line text like this, right? If you, if you don't use that, you can't do that with the single quote or a double quote. So this is really nice for that. Again, that's in more after 2016. So what do you have to say? Um, something like fish uh, caught, and then I put here the size. So you put size like this. Okay, so by you know, I guess we'll call it inches, right? If the fish is like five or ten inches, we'll display that message. So again, notice this function here. I did not have the function view in front. You can't do that because it's a class variable. Okay, so you you just do that. Uh, it, it it is only a function. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is right below here is the the fish stuff. So we're gonna have this function. I'll call it um, uh, catch fish. And this is where all the events will take place. Okay. So this function will be tied to this button here. So that means the catch fish button will actually call this function. Okay. And, and you can do that by doing something like this. So I'll put your catch fish button, add event listener, a click event. When the click is clicked, I'm going to call the function at fish. So again, notice I'm just calling a um, the fish function here. I did not invoke it. If you do that, it's incorrect. So you don't invoke that because you're going to call this function later in the future. Like right? how later? Well, when I click this button, okay? If you don't click it, the function will never fire. Okay, and this is called a callback function. I put it here because um, I, I created a separate function. You can totally invoke this entire function inside here like this, that's fine too. Okay, I think I did that a little bit that last week. Well, let's say that I put a separate like this. 
and you can always refactor. So when I want to call this function, uh, what should happen? Okay, so I want to um, first leave a message, which is this message here, which is the message above here. I want to go ahead and clear the message, that inner HTML. Right, I want to clip the blink. So that's the message up here, right? Um, that would be up here if I do that. It would, as you can see, show the message right here. Okay, I'll leave it blank. Um, I also want to have a message ID equal to blank. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. And this may be just for like um, CSS stuff. Okay, so I'm clearing here. It's like clear, clear the message. And here I'm basically um, I'll clear the ID for that message. Uh, tag, which is the P tag, okay? And then I'm gonna create a, um, a fish size. And this one here is gonna be just a random number. So I'll do a math that will work. Again, this is just something, you know, you have to memorize, there's no uh, trick to this. Um, it's it's pretty standard. So um, the floor, we need just get the whole number, right? Uh, floor and then uh, get the random number. Now we're between, uh, zero and 10, and you got a plus one to it, this will give you a random number. Random, um, it'll be between one through 10, okay? That will give you that size. I'll do another, um, okay, so once I get the number, then I'm gonna pass this fish size to the class, right? The class has a size here. So I can create a fish object. So const fish object, it's equal to no fish. I pass in the fish size. Okay, so now I created my fish object. So that object is now exists. And the next thing one is I'm going to get the information from this function. So you put here cause, you know, call it fish and fold. Uh, fold is going to be from the fish that get fish and fold. You call the function. And it will say fish cough if it's five, it would say five inches and whatnot. Right now, I'm getting the data from there. And then I also want to have another one just in case, I'm um, just for the fun of this game. I'll, and I'll call it like got away. And I'll do another random number. I'll just do, I use exactly the same one here. Bam. So another random number between one and 10. Okay, so those are the data that I have, I collected, and now it's going to be the processing part, right? Output, basically. What I'm going to do. So I want to check to see if the fish size is greater than 5. Okay. I mean, if it's greater than 5, then I'll call it, um, um, greater than 5. Okay, let's do them. I want to use a small. If it's less than 5, then it's like too small. Okay, we will let this go. So I'm gonna change the message up here. Okay, so message that in HTML is say, um, use the back tick here again. I put here the fish side. Uh, so fish info, the message, um, I'll put here like too small. And then I'll put here, throw back uh, into the on. Or I guess we call it a link. And I, I miss my picture. So that message will be displayed above if it's less than five. And then we do nothing about that. Else, if the fish got away, let's say that if it's less than five as well, uh, then I want to say something like message that uh, another one it's equal to, I put the same thing, maybe the same message here. I'll just change the content. So say what's in type B. And I will say uh, fish, um, maybe not that was the gotaway. Okay. Else, then this is the good fish we call, right? So we're gonna, that means that the, the fish is good, but we catch it and then we're gonna do a, um, a um, message here. So I wanna get, the, um, the item, I'm going to create the list item like I did earlier. I'll do it in the code. 
document create element called um, li, right? The li tag. And then I'm going to list the item. I'm going to add in here the text content. I use text content. You can also use inner HTML. Either one uh, would work. Uh, not not error. Them equal to the fish info, right? So the information comes back. It would say, you know, fish caught five inches or I mean, you know, ten inches or whatnot. If you display that to the content of this li, so we got the li created, and then now we have to append that to the DOM tree, right? So here you put um, the constant um, the release button. I'm, I'm going to add a a release button I showed you earlier. So we'll call it release. Uh, BTN again. I'm using document create element, and we'll call it. Uh, I'm not going to use the bar. I'll use a spend tag. I'm going to style it using. Say it would look like a button, but it's not a button. And then uh, the the text for that button. They put here the uh, the text content would be um, release and release it. If you click that uh, button, it's going to release it. So um, I'll then also do a um, add a class to the list. We call it a release uh, BTN. Now this is a class in the CSS, so I, I gave you that CSS earlier, um, right? And this is the class here. I, I call it um, you know release. Uh, do I have it? Yeah, fish list, right? A release button. Oh, I don't have it. Right. Let's see. We can always add later. And then once you get the button done, then I'm going to add this button to the L line. So I'm going to do the append child, the release button. Okay. Once you get that done, and then finally we're going to add it to the uh, fish list. Fish list here, again, a pen child because the li is indeed a type. Okay, so that will be uh, the that's this is the process. It's a little bit hard to see, but that's what happened. And I, I don't know if it's going to work or not. Let's let's try. Okay? We're going to refresh this page again and see if it actually does something. Okay, so we see that we caught a fish and the fish is in five inches. And um, because it's not less than five, therefore this is not true. And then it's not less than five, this is not true. So therefore we call it, right? So we built it alive. We add it to the efficient boat. And then we have a release button. As you can see here, it's not functional yet because I did not, you know, add the event to it. But now it's all set up. And if I try to get catch another fish, you see that now this fish is called, is a three inches one. It's too small, and we release it. We throw it back to uh, not the lock manager um, to the lake. I said to the lake here. Okay, we add to the lake. So the seven, and this one we call, but it got away, right? I mean, it, it meets our requirement. We want to get that um, larger than five, but somehow this is uh, a number that is between less than five, and then we just throw that fish away. Okay, and then. You know, again, too small, we throw it to the lake, and then too small, and then that one got away, and a lot of fish got away. <laughs> okay, we got one here, and then you can do it again. I got another one, and so forth. Okay, so what I show here is I, I'm doing, you know, DOM manipulation. Uh, I'm doing, I'm using a class to create object for my fish uh, right here, um, and I also create a list of fish. And then I populate that fish object to the DOM tree, right? When I put it here, push it here, I did not keep a record of all the fish though, right? So you could create a list in here and then store all the fish object um, you caught inside of your list. And that's something that, you know, you can challenge yourself to do that. It's very easy. There's an array, you can push the fish into that, um, to the array when you caught it, right? If it's not called, then you don't own that, but just push it to that uh, array. And then lastly, you say, okay, if we want to release it, what happens? What should happen? So that is the button 
that we created right here. And we add it to the LI, and then it's it's just sitting there. And, and then when you click on it, we have to go ahead and then right down here, implement that listener. So you put your release button, that added in listener. It's going to be a click event. And then when we release it, what should we do? So here, in this case, I'm going to use the, um, the arrow function. Okay, it's a callback function that happens only or used only inside this button. So it's not shareable. This function, however, is shareable because I can recall, I can call it again from elsewhere. Okay, so inside here, what happened? So that means that the fish list, no matter get the fish list, uh, let's see here. I'm going to basically uh, remove a child. Okay, when you, you can append a child, you can also remove a child. Which child is this uh, that I'm removing? The child of this item. Okay, when you create this item, this, this LI. So I've removed that from the DOM tree. Okay, and then uh, when that's done, I'm going to, um, uh, so remove that from the DOM tree and then also from the list item. I need to remove the child of the button as well. So basically removing the text from there. And then the message, I also want to update the inner HTML, which is the message in the top to say something like, um, you know, uh, this item, uh, that text content, whatever that is inside the content of the LI, I, um, I would say was a release. So we're releasing that fish back to the lake. Okay, so let's give it a try and see if this actually works. We go again. Okay, we got that one got away. And then we keep trying to catch one. We got one. Try another catch and we've got two of them. Okay, so if I try and remove that, the first one, as you can see, right? We click that. We remove the item from the fish list. The list here is from the DOM tree. Okay, so from the H, we remove that from the UL here. That's, that's all we're doing. But after that, we have to remove the button from the item because the item is still floating around. Right, I mean, still there. So, what do you add up here? So, now we add the, the item to the L line, you have to reverse that. So, if you remove that, we add the um, item to the fish list, we have to remove that. So, these two basically remove this whole thing here. If you do not remove the, uh, the item here, if I turn that off, for example, like that, then it might be a little bit awkward. As you can see, if I have to remove it, in this case, you know, it's, it's fine because it's already inside the uh, the uh, li okay i've been moved up from li but in memory it was still floating inside the li the list item so i just save to remove both of them okay so i mean it's kind of hard to um see here so i'm going to launch this in the browser okay so here we have the fish app i'm going to do a inspect to look at the dom tree so you can have a better um, view of that element. Here's the tree here. Nothing here yet, but a catch one. Okay, we put a message here. That's the message we added to the DOM. Do another one. We caught a fish and we add this almost like semi permanent to our list. So the UL now has our LI. Okay, that's the one that we created. And then LI has the text of the fish. And then we have a span tag. That has the uh, the word fish release over here. Uh, that's what we created inside here. And now, once you create this button, as you notice, there's no ID um, or any of that attaches to this span tag. So when we add another fish like this, we add a couple of them, okay, like this. So the the trick is, how do I know, right? When I click this button, right? How do I know which button, which one to remove? Let me get another one. Okay. Well, why is it seven? Okay. Um, anyway, so that's interesting. So if I remove this, the first one here, how does it know to remove that one and not the other one? Like if I move 
I removed the uh, the middle one here. Okay, so I just know which one to remove. Okay, I did not include any IDs in here, and the the reason why it works is is this. So just remember that every element you create in the DOM tree, there can be only one copy of that element, uh, only one object. Each LI you see here is it's an independent object. The span tag it, it's independent. So what that means that when you create this item, this LI, and then when you create this span tag, right, they come together in in that pair. And then when you attach that to the DOM tree, as long as these objects exist in the DOM tree, you can reference them, you can get them. It doesn't matter where they are located in your page. If you're up here, down here, it doesn't matter as long as they're on the same page here. And then all you have to do is you, as you create that, you add an event to that button. Okay. So the first time around, I call the first fish, I create my first LI, I create my first band tag, I mean the button, and then I attach the event right away. Okay. Once an event has been attached to that object, it stays with that object pretty much until the app closes or you destroy it. And then when you click on it, it knows that it's coming from that particular object or class, right? So that's why it, it works.